This video demonstrates the benchtop working practice by using hand tools and associated methods to produce a component to the drawing provided. Here is a general view of the workshop practice area. We make sure to wear the personal protective equipment. This session needs a pair of safety goggles, a pair of steel toe cap shoes and a lab coat. The benchtop practice area is at the left side near the entrance. We have to follow safety instructions at all times and be cautious when using any equipment, hand tools and when handling sharp materials. Here's a drawing of the part that we'll produce today. We will work on a 6mm thick mild steel plate. This is a saw cut piece with a rough face at one side. We split the procedure into several steps as shown in the bottom figure. The steps are as follows. At first we will file the edge and obtain finished edges. Then we will mark out the part for the cut and drill lines. We'll centre punch the part. We will cut out the parts as per the drawing. Then we will drill a hole in the middle and file it to a rectangular shape. We will drill four more holes and open threads to two smaller holes at the side. The final step shows the final part with screw threads. Before we start, we would like to introduce you to the equipment. This is a bench drill which we will use for opening the holes. It has two emergency stop or e-stop buttons. One on the bench and the other at the side of the machine. The e-stop button on the machine is also the cover of the start and stop buttons. Here we show you how e-stop operates. When you feel any danger with the machine or environment, you just press the button firmly as shown. This will immediately cut the power to the machine. We will use two vice clamps. The fixed one on the bench is for filing and tapping and the other portable vice is used for producing holes at the drill press. Other equipment are hacksaw and centre punch and hammer, scribe, files, thread taps and tap wrench, drill bits and blue layout ink. The vernier caliper, ruler and square are for checking the quality of the part as we produce it. For visible marking lines, we paint the parts on one side with blue layout ink before the process. Mark the material on one side with the marking blue and brush. This is the vernier height gauge and surface plate to mark reference lines at accurate positions. Let's see how we can obtain the first stage. Let's start with producing the part. This is a saw cut 50mm by 50mm square part with a rough face, so the first step will be filing this face. Using a file, file the edges of the steel material flat and square. It's recommended to use the marked line as a guide and keep it close to the top of the vise. Check the size with the vernier caliper provided. Check the surface flatness and perpendicularity with the square provided. We continue filing until we're satisfied with the quality. A good part is achieved when we don't see light passing through the square. After filing is completed, the part may have burrs which may not be safe for handling. For safety, we always deburr sharp edges and corners. It's recommended to lift up the part to easily deburr the edges and corners. Here's how the surface and edges look after filing and deburring. The next step is the marking of the plate. For visible marking lines, we apply layout ink on one side by using a brush. Using the vernier height gauge on the marking out table and using the angle plate, set the various heights and mark the witness lines on the surface material as specified on the drawing. Using the scribe and rule, mark the angled line across the corner of the plate. With the centre punch, mark the centre of the holes for drilling later. These will allow using a full-size drill to open the holes. Now we will see how to saw the angled and square corners to obtain the third stage. For sawing off the angled corner, clamp the workpiece while keeping the marked line close to the vise. Using a hacksaw, carefully cut the angled corner by following the marked line. For sawing off the square corner, Clamp the workpiece carefully while keeping the marked line just above the top of the vise. To cut the other side of the square corner, unclamp the part and reclamp it after turning. Pay attention to keeping the marked line just above the top of the vise. 
Then saw off the remaining edge of the square corner. Finally we finished the faces off flat and square to the lines. We can use a triangular file for the angled corner while a square file works best for the square corner. Be careful to keep the filed face close to the clamping location. Check alignment and size with the square and vernier caliper as we've done before in the first step. Finally, deburr the edges by applying the file at an angle. Next we'll see how to produce the rectangular hole. We will first drill a central hole using a mark for the centre of the material. Install the workpiece on the portable vise. For safety, remember to clamp the vise to the drill table. Now, install the 13mm drill bit to the drilling chuck by manually twisting the outer rim. For increased safety from metal chips, swarth and broken tools, we used the guard prior to drilling. Using the drill handle, open a through hole on the steel workpiece. Fix the parts to the bench vise and use the square file to file out the central rectangular hole to the pre-marked reference lines. Regularly check with the square that the hole is square to the edges and the size is correct with the vernier caliper. We produced the rectangular central hole. The next stage is to get the final part by opening the remaining two clearance holes and the two tapped holes. As per the part drawing, we will drill the remaining four holes. Remember to clamp the vise to the drill table. Drill the two small holes by a 8.5mm drill bit. These holes will be later tapped. Drill the two larger holes by a 10mm drill bit. The final step is to open the threads in the smaller holes. We will produce two M10 1.5 tapped holes. For this purpose we will use this three piece M10 by 1.5 hand tap set with taper number one, the second number two and the plug number three taps. The taps have different forms to aid ease of producing the full form threads in the material. Number one taper tap has the largest lead that reduces the tapping forces, hence it's used for starting the thread. Number two second tap has less lead than the taper thread and the number three tap has very little lead with one to two threads. Therefore the second tap is used next and the plug tap is used to finish producing the tapped hole. We'll start by mounting the workpiece on the bench vise. For the first step of threading mount the number one or first tap into the wrench. Bring the tap at the entry of the hole to be tapped. Tap the hole as shown. The technique to produce the thread is half a turn forwards and a quarter turn back using the taps and tap wrench. The purpose is to break the metal swarf inside. For the second step of threading we will repeat the same procedure and tap the hole again using the number two tap. As a last step take the number three or plug tap to create a full form thread in each of the two tapped holes as per the drawing. Finally Safely deburr any sharp edges for safe handling of the part. We can test the threads by an M10 machine screw. This completes the benchtop practice session activity. We have seen how to produce this part as per the drawing using benchtop tools and drill press. Thanks for watching.